Hi, this is Dr. Raji Gopal, and I'm going to be talking about rhinoplasty surgery. I actually do a lot of rhinoplasty surgery, and I enjoy doing that. Um, one of the most important characteristics for me when I do rhinoplasty surgery is to really create a nose that goes with the patient's face um, and with their ethnic background. Um, a cute turned up nose may not look acute in a uh, different kind of facial frame um, or a different kind of um, ethnic um, background. So it's really important not only to look at the nose by itself, but to look at the nose with the rest of the face and to get a, maybe a little history of um, where the patient is from. And of course, very important is also to find out what the patient actually wants, because you want to really deliver um, as much as the patient wants. And so in rhinoplasty, it's very important for the patients to understand um, what can be done, what can be done and what cannot be done, so that they're, um, really, uh, they have ex uh, expectations that are um, realistic. So initially, during the initial consultation, other than me examining the nose, um, we have an in-depth conversation as to what can be accomplished, um, uh, how much of the nose can be changed. Um, and during a second consultation, I do have patients bring in pictures that they like and dislike, so I have an idea of, of what really the patient wants. And that again helps me determine um, my final um, surgical um, treatment for the um, patient. Um, generally, most patients come in either because they ha their nose is a little too big or that they have a dorsal hump or sometimes their tip isn't quite right. So we really kind of address all these um, issues during the rhinoplasty. Um, most, most of the time I use what's called an open rhinoplasty approach um, where there's a small incision in the columellar area um, and the rest of the incisions are inside the nose. And that incision actually heals really well. Uh, occasionally I will use what's a close rhinoplasty technique um, when I'm not doing much tip work. That means the tip is perfect and we're dealing with other issues. Um, during a rhinoplasty surgery, I have patients, obviously the day of surgery they would come in um, it's, um, and it's done as an outpatient procedure. Uh, the surgery itself takes anywhere between two and a half to three and a half hours. Um, and I usually do them under complete anesthesia, so they're asleep. Once the surgery is done, they do go home the same day. Um, and nearly all the time with the complete rhinoplasty, they'll have a splint on top of the nose um, to protect uh, the newly shaped nose. Also, they have packing inside the nose. Um, usually the packing will last for 48 hours. We see the patient back in 48 hours and remove the packing. Um, that day, they do need to have someone take them home. And the next time I see them is generally in 48 hours for us to remove the packing. And then after that, I see them approximately a, a week after that, so about 10 days after surgery, to remove what's called the overlying splint. When this, the day the splint is removed, the patient can obviously see improvements in the nose, even though the nose is still swollen. So you kind of have to use a little imagination to see what the end result would be. Three-dimensionally, the nose is a little bigger, so it'll be smaller, more refined, um, things like that. But in about, one, the, once the splint is removed, the patient can get back to normal um, uh, daily activities, but still not exercise. Um, and really, to start fully exercising, it really takes up to six weeks. Uh, at about six weeks, I usually tell patients that the nose is close to about 80% or so final result. And the last 20% can take six months to one year, depending on how much surgery was done, how thick the patient's skin is, um, and generally how, how fast the patient heals. But generally, in about one year, um, healing is complete and not, and not very many changes occur after that.